Welcome back to Bay Area People. New research just presented at the International Alzheimer's Conference suggests poor sleep may increase people's risk of Alzheimer's disease. Well, why? Well, it comes down to a protein that starts damage long before memory loss actually begins. Joining me to talk about the findings is Kaiser Permanente researcher, Dr. Rachel Whitmer, and from the Northern California Alzheimer's Association, Ruth Gay. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. So let's talk about this research. I mean, we all know sleep is important, but it seems to be even more important when you're talking about Alzheimer's. Exactly. So there's been a lot of studies that have followed people over several decades finding an association between having sleep problems or getting less than six hours of sleep per night and having a future elevated risk of either dementia or cognitive problems. What's new about this study is they looked at folks in their 70s who did not have any problems with their cognitive function, but they found an association between having amyloid and less deep sleep and also having an inability to memorize new uh, ma material. So it seems, from what I've read, it's, it's a cycle, right? That if you don't get enough sleep, you have more of this protein, then the protein keeps you from getting more sleep, and so then it all kind of builds on one another. Exactly, so it's hard to know from this study, you know, sort of which comes first, you know, right. chicken or egg. Does this protein cause people to sort of not get as much deep sleep, or does not getting enough sleep cause this protein to build up? But what's so exciting about this study is that this is showing a plausible mechanism that can explain the association that we see between getting not enough sleep and a future elevated risk. And so for people at home going, well, how does this affect me? If this is something where you say, don't undervalue it, make sure you get to bed, make sure you make this a priority. Exactly. So on the one hand, it could get folks worried, but I also see it as kind of good news because this is a, uh, a behavior or risk factor that you can change. It's controllable. Exactly. Yeah. So let, I want to talk about funding because I know that you've talked about this and the, the importance of research, right? The importance of knowing what's, what's going on. How do you feel in terms of prioritizing this in terms of the healthcare industry? How are we doing? Well, you know, Alzheimer's is, is really underfunded. When you think about this as the most expensive disease in America today, when we look at the fact that it could bankrupt Medicare and Medicaid services by the year 2050 if we don't do something to change the course of this over time. Yeah, let's talk about the numbers. We've had a couple graphics and we can throw them up on our screen so that people can kind of see what we're talking about. And, and we got these numbers um, from you folks, which it talks about this year, one in five Medicare dollars will be spent on someone with Alzheimer's, it's 18%. And then there's a prediction, right, for 2015, 2050, I should say, in our next graphic, where that goes up dramatically with one in three, three Medicare dollars, 31%. So we go from 18 to 31%. How do you attribute that number in terms of just the number of people who come down with it, the number of people who need treatment? It, you know, it's kind of a combination of expenses, right? As people become more impaired with Alzheimer's disease, the costs of care go up. Many of these are borne by Medicare, sometimes in skilled nursing facilities and in hospitals, but also just in the costs of care that are, uh, that accumulate over the course of this disease. This is a disease that can last anywhere from eight to 15 or 20 years. So what is your hope in terms, I mean, do you think that, that either Washington or state government just don't see it as important? Do you think it's being pushed out by other needs and other? I, I, think, I think it's for a very long time, the effects of Alzheimer's were sort of seen as a normal part of aging. And we know that that is not the case. We know this is a disease process going on. So what we have to do is invest in this disease in the way that we invested with HIV AIDS, in the way that we invested like with cancer. We have to have a war on this disease. And if we right now have a request before Congress to work up to $2 billion a year in Alzheimer's disease research, right now today we fall far below even a billion dollars. So we really need to make an investment in this disease if we are going to change the course of it for the millions, over 5 million today, 16 million by 2050, if we don't do something to change the trajectory. It is very long term too, what you're talking about in terms of how much and how long care will be needed and how specific, it is very specific. I have family members who have faced this and it is very specific kind of treatment. Uh, it, do you think there's enough research going on in terms of, of determining factors like sleep and, and other ways that we could help mitigate? I think we're at an exciting path right now. There's a lot of really exciting stuff that's being looked at, but a lot more needs to be done, a lot more. So hopefully there will be more funding coming. Hopefully the conversation and the funding. All right, yeah. thanks so much. We appreciate you guys coming in. Certainly sure. a lot of information that's, that's very useful to a lot of people facing this or worried about facing it.